Hello and welcome back to Spandia's Build Academy. In today's Academy episode, we're going to learn how to create custom planets for Imperion and Galactic Survival. Before we get started, we're going to need to get a few things, first of all. First thing is Notepad++. Link down below in the video description, download and install that. The second one is the Imperion Playfield Designer. Again, link down below in the video description to the forums where you can download the latest version. There is also a guide available for the Imperion Playfield Designer. The third thing is I recommend, you don't have to do this, but I recommend you create a shortcut on the desktop to your Imperion Galactic Survival folder, your installation folder. What I've also done is I've installed the Imperion Playfield Designer or EPD into the Imperion Galactic Survival folder just so it's all in the same place. To install the EPD, all you need to do is download it from the website and then extract it into the location of your choice and Again, optional, you can create then a shortcut on your desktop along with everything else you're going to need. With those in place, it helps to have a plan as well. What kind of planet do you want to create? What kind of thing are you going for? So for this video, what I've decided to do is a new snow planet. First thing you need to do is come into your Imperion Galactic Survival installation directory. Head into content and then playfields. Now, in here is all the different planet types that are available in the game. So we've got various temperates, swamps, the space playfield, snow, ocean, and the barren, barren metal, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We're going to do a snow planet. So I'm going to copy this snow folder here. And I'm just going to paste it straight back into the same folder and it creates a copy. And now rename this SBA for the Spanish Build Academy, snow. I'm going to get rid of that space between those two as well. So it's all just one word. So our new playfield is SBA Snow. We can copy this folder out later on if we need to copy it into a scenario. Now, head back to the main Imperium Galactic Survival folder and then into Solar System Generator. Start up the Solar System Generator and hit play. The first thing you need to do is set your export directory, okay? So click on this little folder icon here and make sure it's set to the Imperium Galactic Survival folder, content, and then playfields. And then just hit select folder. Okay, now working your way sorted down, under planet type, hit the drop down, and look for that new folder that you created, SBA Snow. Set the size of the planet that you want to create. I'm going to leave mine as three. You can set a seed, and you can also set a fixed terrain if you want to. I'm not going to, so I'm going to leave this as is. This will have no effect unless I press that load button. I'm going to set a seed. Uh, blah, blah, blah. That'll do. <laughs> Random number. And then I'm going to hit generate. And what you'll get is a snow planet based on the seed, the YAML files from the original snow planet, but also the sliders and stuff that you have down the bottom here. Now I've already been messing around in the background here, so this snow planet looks a bit weird, but I can change that quite easily just by changing some of these sliders up. So for a snow planet, I probably wouldn't want it to be much more than, well, zero. <laughs> but the more you slide these sliders around, obviously the more the map will change. Try not to pay too much attention to these POIs and stuff. In fact, generally speaking, I just turn them off just by ticking that box there. Also, if you want a 3D look at the map, you can click the 3D button here. That'll give you a little bit more idea of an idea about the height map going on. But generally, I just leave it as 2D. It's easy to play with. Uh, but yeah, most of what you're going to be doing in the SSG here is messing around with these sliders in order to get the type of planet you want or as close to. Now, pay attention to the, um, the colors and stuff that appear and disappear the more you move those sliders around. Those colors are biomes. And if you're not sure which biome is which, you can just mouse over the different colors. And in the top left of the screen there, it'll tell you that this is an ice lens. This green here is Tega snow, and this pink here is ice shelf. So you can see which different biomes are actually being affected by you changing the temperature. So the higher the temperature, the more swamp-like this planet becomes and the snow. But uh, I want a properly kind of inhospitable snow planet here. I want something that's going to be 
dangerous. So I'm going to reduce the, the maximum temperature down to minus 26. The minimum temperature is minus 50. It can go lower than that, but not in the SSG. And we can see that these biomes start to appear, such as gas field edge and um, hell mouths as well. On the right hand side of the SSG over this side, we can actually see the different biomes that can happen uh, on this planet type. We can expand, for example, let's have a look at ice shelf here and its selection criteria because it's not a guaranteed biome it says well that the height needs to be less than 150 the temperature less than minus 17 and the humidity greater than 0.3 and then you'll get ice shelves and indeed we've got ice shelves there's pink areas around the map here uh, if I decrease the humidity amount, you'll notice that they will disappear rather sharpish. So you can actually, probably with the most extreme of settings, reduce almost all the biomes to, to nothing. And you've just basically just got a planet of nothing. <laughs> no, just one biome. The main biome here, if you just mouse over all this white, is glacier snow. Which is, well, what you'd kind of expect, really, given that the minimum temperature... Is minus 26. So this is one cold planet. It does unfortunately mean that it's also going to be a bit boring and a bit barren and desolate. We can do something about that later, but for now, I'm going to leave this as is and I'm just going to mess around with a few more of the sliders. Of course, once you've messed around with everything and you're kind of relatively happy with how it looks, do click generate again over on the right hand side because what you'll probably find is it changes quite significantly based on all the new slider positions and biomes and stuff like that. So while the real-time update gives you a sort of flavor of what's going on, uh, it's not a total representation of it, click that Generate button again and see what actually happens. Now we can see that what I've done to this planet is turn it into a bit of a fire and ice thing going on. All these red splotches are hell mouths and they're everywhere. Um, we've got various ice lenses, a lot of mountains, very little water. Yeah, this is the kind of hoth that I'm going for. It's, it's yeah, a frozen hell, which is interesting. Once you're happy with the terrain here and you, you want to move on to the next phase, click on Export YAML up in the top right corner here. That will save a brand new YAML file that is your new planet. You can now go ahead and close the SSG. Now you want to start up the EPD, the Imperion Playfield Designer. When you first start this program up, it will ask you where the Imperion Galactic Survival executable is. Browse to your installation directory, then the client folder, and select the Imperion.exe. Do not select the launcher. That is not the Imperion client. You need to go into the client folder and select Imperion.exe. Once you're into the Playfield Designer, it should look a bit like this. I'm just going to make this window a little bit bigger. There we go. There's a lot of information and there's a lot to configure in this. Okay, I am not going to go through it all because otherwise this video will be three hours long. If you need information on how or what any of this means, you can either mouse over the individual items and it will tell you a little bit about what they mean and what you can need to or what you can input into the fields. But like I said at the beginning of this video, there is a guide on this on the website on the forums where you download this from so do check that out the other thing you can do is just have a look at how other play fields are set up already if you have a look inside your Imperial Galactic Survival folder and contents scenarios these are the various scenarios that are available to you the Shadows of Starlights, Invaders and Versus Defender and Dawn of Galaxy scenarios are good ones to use as examples because if you go into each one and then you've got lots of different play fields usually that are various different planet types as well. So if you've played these scenarios and maybe you like the look of one particular planet, Jorah Snow, for example, you can load that play field in the EPD, see what all the settings are, and maybe take note of them to then put into your own. But let's go back to our own for now. On the left-hand side of the EPD here, we can see play fields. We can scroll down to our SBA Snow, and then double click on the playfield yaml this is the playfield yaml that would have been generated by the ssg i hope you're all keeping up okay once we load that yaml here this is what it looks like and general rule of thumb at this point is i would leave all of this stuff down the left hand side alone you can change things like the gravity that's fairly simple to do 0.6 is very light 0.9 is more like earth and the higher this number, or rather the lower this number, because we're in minus figures here, 
um, the stronger the gravity will be. It's kind of backwards because it, yeah, minimum minus 50, max zero. But what that means is minus 50 is the maximum gravity and zero is the minimum gravity. <laughs> so it's kind of back to front. Be careful with that one. Um, breathable atmosphere, self-explanatory. Uh, watercolor. I want to change mine to blue. You could change it to lava if you want to. Red, interesting. Okay, I'm just going to go with blue. That's fine. The background music of the playfields of, of the planet. Great. I'm going to change it to, I don't know, Apogee. That'll do. And that's probably as much as I've changed. The height map, the biome stamps, the base level, terrain level, all this stuff down here, I'm going to leave very well alone because that is what the SSG has done. Like I said before, if you want to see how other planets have done it, open them up in here, see what they are. Maybe you can copy them over into your own one. Further right, you've got humidity masks and temperature masks. Again, if there's anything in those, I generally leave them alone. The ground shape masks, generally leave them alone. Feel free to add a description if you want. Planet type snow, enable atmosphere. Yes, it's not breathable, but there is an app. Sorry, it is breathable, my bad. There is an atmosphere, but it doesn't need to be breathable. Atmosphere will give you clouds. Difficulty, let's wrap that right up to five. Thank you very much. And then you get into special effects and weather. Um, now, I'm going to leave the special effects alone. You can add in some other... I don't really care, to be honest. <laughs> Things like the little bugs that fly around and stuff like that. You can actually add the wind lines in, which would be quite good on a snow planet, I think. Uh, any biome always yeah okay let's have some wind lines in it's a snowy windy planet i think that would kind of work quite well and then you've got weather down here now weather i would want to mess with let's just quickly go through that and if you edit any of the weather things the initial delay is how long it will take before it starts when you first load onto the planet the delay then is how long it will take before it comes back after another weather pattern has finished and the lifetime is how long it lasts in the first place. So this clear weather is the, probably the first weather type you will see because there is a zero initial delay um, and it will last for 1200 seconds. And then after this weather pattern finishes, it will roll the dice on another weather pattern. When that one finishes, there's another possible delay of three seconds before this one will kick in again. So, we could yeah we can mess with those all day colors i'd be careful with colors um because as you can see you've got some quite vibrant and bright and dark colors in here generally if you're going to change the color i'd stick with the same tone of color even if it's a different color altogether for example atmosphere color is the dark blue uh, if i was wanted to change that to green i'd select the dark green or a dark red or you know so on and so forth and sky color being this bright pink here if i wanted to change that to blue it would be a, a very light bright blue or light like green you know you, you stick with the same shades otherwise you're gonna yeah get some weird stuff happening if you want to take the color palette from another planet for example i'd load that other planet up in here in the epd see what these numbers are and then just copy those numbers over into this one. You can enter the numbers directly. You don't need to use the drop down if you don't want to. There's a lot of configurability in this. You can change the wind speed, the radiation. You can change whether it's a PVP playfield or not. I'm not going to go through it all. You can mouse over each one and it will tell you, generally speaking, um, what you can put into those fields. Some of these are just not filled in but allow blueprints is pretty self-explanatory. So going through the EPD is going to take time because not only have you got this panel here, you've got these tabs at the top as well. And under each tab is another huge section of different options available to you. Okay, so from the general characteristics, which we were on, to resources. This is where you can determine what different types of resources are available on the planet. And what biomes they occur in, how many there are, whether that scales to the planet size, and what distribution type it is, because you've got differences in SSOR and voxel. Distribution type default will be the default for that type of resource. I copper will be voxel, but I could change it to a cylinder type SSOR if I really wanted to. I can mess with the amount, the size of the deposit, how deep the deposit is, and whether there are any drones around it as well. And then I can even change the texture. I'm not going to go into too much of it at all. And then you've got asteroids and meteorites of those resources, generally speaking, with this one. 
you've got um, the threshold or you've got always so you can just set initial delays I'm going to stick with threshold biomes I'd leave that alone if I was you uh, that's again that's done by the SSG so I'm gonna leave that alone POIs yeah and th this is where it gets even more complicated and you, and you just it's, it takes a lot of patience with this sort of thing under POIs you can customize what faction they're in whether it creates territory what biomes or it it occurs in or doesn't occur in uh, you can tell it where to place whether it's near another POI how many drones are over whether it troop spawns a troop transport whether it's the POI that the player starts in whether it spawns near another POI or avoids another POI. <laughs> I hope you're getting the idea generally what I would do is if you want to figure out how to do certain things is to see how it's done already and just kind of try and copy that over to your design um, but essentially you're just going to be working through each of these tabs and working your way through the if I wanted to change all these Rados POIs to GIST POIs for example then obviously I'd remove all these Rados ones and add GIST ones in I wanted to take that trade station out very easily you just press delete on the trade station or change the trade station type I wanted the drone base to be a, 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 a Zenu fortress rather than the basic T1 then I'd say drone base T3 instead um, but yeah be careful because the more you change with the POIs and stuff, you're going to break referencing in other POIs because some POIs will have references to other POIs within them. So if you remove one or change the name of one, you're going to break the reference between the other ones. So, uh, yeah, go through them line by line individually and set them up however you need to. You've got at the bottom here the fixed player start. If this is a starter planet, this is where you'd set up how they start, whether it would be an escape pod or whether it would be in a structure or at a position. If it's a structure, you need to know the name of it. It needs to have a player spawn pad on it. We'll go into POIs and stuff in another video. Drones, pretty self-explanatory with drones, how many you want, how many reserve, the probability, the difficulty, which drones it's going to be spawning. And if we have a look at um, this enemy drone V2 minigun here and edit that, we can tell it how many there are and how many more there will be. <laughs> we can even change the type if we want to as well. Patrol vessel stuff. With the patrol vessel stuff, I don't fully understand it. Have a look at how it's already set up on another planet. And generally speaking, just copy that. I would. There's a lot of drone, uh, sorry, planet vessel, patrol vessel stuff all over the place. In there, under the POIs. Generally speaking, just see how it's already set up and maybe copy that over. Creatures, again, creatures and spawn zones are linked to POIs in some cases as well. You can see here there's a TS planet reference. So if you delete that trade station, you're going to have to delete this reference. Um, and you might want to add some more creatures in. That's easy enough. You just tell it where to spawn these creatures. I'm going to say any. I'm not going to exclude any biomes. I'm going to say, yeah. Yeah, across the board um, everywhere I'm not going to set any radiuses what I'm going to do is add the entity spider 3 which is those blue spiders that spit at you leave the biome occurrence blank set it to night though and I'm going to set the amount to I don't know, 250 there we go so we're going to have spiders everywhere but only at night for example so eventually, once you've worked your way through all of these panels, and you're probably going to have to spend a bit of time going backwards and forwards between different um, different planets, and backwards and forwards between doing this once, going over it again and again, until you get it right. Once you've finished, however, and you're happy to save, click save up here. What the EPD tool will do is it will do a pre-flight check. So you might get an error come up. I haven't changed much at all here, so I didn't get an error come up. But it will tell you what is wrong. For example, if I, let's, uh, just to show you, if I delete this TS Planet uh, trade station from the POIs and then click Save, it's going to tell me all the references where that TS Planet occurs. So it's not going to let me save that until I resolve these errors. Okay, or I could just load it back up again and it will come back. Um, so EPD is pretty good at spotting errors. So if you're getting errors in your YAML file or whatever you've created, loading it into EPD could be a good way of clearing them out as well. But yeah, just click save 
it'll create a pre-saved backup as well which you can load if you've made mistakes but that is that little yaml file there is our custom planet we go back into our imperion content folder here all the way back to playfields sba snow we see a reflection of this down here that is our custom planet and in the next video we're going to go over how to create a scenario so that we can add this planet in and then we can actually go and walk around on it and see what's what hope you found this video useful if you did consider giving it a like if you're new here consider smashing that subscribe button for more videos on imperion and i promise they're much more entertaining than this usually <laughs> thank you very much for watching and hopefully i'll see you next time until then take care bye bye